Okay, right here is a 1910 Atlantic Class 80 18 four and a half railroad shovel. Atlantic Equipment Company was established in 1902 as a subsidiary of American Locomotive Company, which was formed in 1901. The shovels were designed by A.W. Robinson, the former chief engineer of Bucyrus, and from his engineering designs, the company developed a line of railroad shovels that would earn Atlantic Equipment Company a solid reputation in the mining and quarry industry for building well-built heavy-duty shovels. Now, let's go and get a closer look at this old girl. Originally introduced in 1904 as a four cubic yard shovel, the Class 80 was later upgraded and reappeared in 1907 with the ability to swing a dipper up to five cubic yard capacity, which is exactly the size dipper that you are looking at on this Class 80. Class 80 was also the largest in Atlantic Equipment Company's line of railroad shovels. The model number nomenclature for the Atlantic Class railroad shovels is read as follows. The first two numbers denote the shovel's effective dipper pull times 1,000 pounds. The second set of numbers denote the shovel's loading clearance height above a rail car. And the third set of numbers denote the shovel's bucket capacity in cubic yards. So, in the case of the Class 80 18 four and a half, this machine has an 80,000 pound dipper pull, an 18 foot six inch loading clearance, and a standard four and a half cubic yard dipper. Some of the most distinguishing and also best design features of an Atlantic railroad shovel included a well-engineered triangular shaped shovel boom, complete with all hoisting and crowding machinery mounted on the back side of the boom, which allowed for a straight line pull to the boom point. Large diameter boom point sheaves, which allowed the Class 80 to achieve a greater proportion of rope pull at a more advantageous dig angle and also helped reduce rope wear and steel cables instead of chains to operate all major attachment functions. The Class 80 was rated at an average working speed of three to five digging cycles per minute. Right here you can see where the boom connects to the top of the turntable. And if you look right here, you can see the swing ropes that run around the turntable. And this is what will swing the entire front attachment on this machine, left or right, a full 180 degrees. As you can see, this Class 80 is mounted on crawlers. Now let's talk a little bit about this setup.
At the time when the Class 80 was built, crawler tracks were not offered for this machine or any Atlantic Railroad shovel. However, over the next decade, as crawler tracks on shovels became a more common design practice, and customers began to see the benefit to crawler tracks over rail car wheels, starting in the 1920s, shovel manufacturers began offering conversion kits, and this was to allow customers to switch the older railroad shovels over from rail mount to crawler mount, which is exactly what happened to this Class 80. The conversion itself removed the front and rear rail car axles and replaced them with the new crawler assembly. The front crawlers simply connected to the outrigger structure on each side on the front of the shovel, while the rear steering crawlers connected to the underside center of the machine superstructure. And as you can see, this crawler conversion kit for this Class 80 was supplied by Bucyrus. Bucyrus became the first shovel manufacturer to begin offering crawler conversion kits for railroad shovels in 1922. The Bucyrus supplied crawler conversion kit for the Atlantic Class 80 was available with either 24 inch or 36 inch wide crawler shoes depending on what the customer preferred and also depending on the type of ground conditions that the shovel would be working on. This particular Class 80 is equipped with the wider 36 inch crawler shoes for working on a softer ground surface. Now, let's talk a little bit about the drive system on this machine. Here you can see where the axle connects to the rear drive sprocket on the side of the crawler frame. And this axle connects to the gear case, which you can see right here, mounted on the underside of the shovel. And if you look, you can see where the main drive shaft runs from the gear case up into the house. And this connects to gears that are driven by the engine. How this system works is very simple. When this machine is engaged into the propel mode, the engine will engage the gears to rotate the main drive shaft, which will supply power to the gear case. The gear case in turn will supply power to the left and right front crawlers and also supply power to rotate the worm shaft, which is this long shaft that you see running underneath the shovel, which connects to the rear steering crawlers, which is what we are going to go and take a look at next. From here you can get a good view of the rear steering crawler assembly on the Class 80. The rear crawlers on this machine are designed to oscillate to conform to uneven ground surfaces. Right here you can see where the crawler assembly connects to the top of the machine superstructure. And if you look right here again you can see where it says Bucyrus. And right here you can see the steering gear which will engage the rear crawlers to turn left or right. And from right here, you can get another good view of the steering system on this machine. And if you look under here, on the side of the machine superstructure, here you can see the original manufacturer's plate that says, American Locomotive Company, the machine serial number, 47340, the plant that this machine was built at, Rogers Works, and the manufacturing date in May of 1910. Let's go up inside of the Class 80. The class
Class 80 was designed around a boxcar style frame. And as you can see, the sides of the house on this shovel are made of wood. Right here you can see the original access ladder, which would swing downward to allow operators or mechanics to climb on and off this shovel. Let's go inside. The primary fuel source to power the Class 80 was bituminous coal, and right back here is the coal bunker, which can hold up to 4.4 ton of coal. As you can see, the coal bunker on this shovel is enclosed. However, normally it would be open to the elements. The company who owned this Class 80 took the time to enclose it to help contain the heat inside the house on this machine for when the shovel is in operation in the winter time. The coal stored in the rear bunker would be shoveled manually and fed into the firebox of a 52 inch diameter boiler, which you can see right here. This massive boiler measures 21 feet 4 inches in length and contains 96 two and a quarter inch diameter tubes, each measuring 12 feet 11 and a half inches in length, which provide a total heating surface area of 753 and a half square feet. From here, the steam travels to the engines, which is what we are going to go and take a look at next. Right here you can see the damper, which is where the coal would be fed into. Three big steam reciprocating engines power the Class 80, which consists of a main engine with a 12 inch by 12 inch bore and stroke, one swing engine, and one crowd engine, both with a 9 inch by 9 inch bore and stroke. What you are looking at right here is the swing engine. The Class 80 operates under a working pressure of 125 PSI. Right here you can see where the engine would engage the gears to propel the swing drum and also which would connect down below to the propel gear. Mounted on the right and left side of the boiler inside the house of this machine are two large water tanks. You can see one right here and the other is on the opposite side and these supply the boiler with a total of 2,000 gallons of fresh water. And from right here you can get another good view of the massive boiler on this machine. And if you look up top, you can see where the exhaust steam would leave the boiler and travel up through the exhaust pipe. Through this door is the operator station. Let's go and check it out. From right here you can get a good overview of the right side operator station on the Class 80. There are two operator stations on this shovel, one on each side of the machine. You can see the left side operator station over there. The purpose of this was to allow the operator to operate this machine on the same side that he would be loading the rail cars. Here you can see the wooden operator seat and all of the big hand levers out in front that would control all of the digging functions on this machine when the shovel would be in operation. Here you can get a good view of the turntable. And here you can see the main hoist engine, which will drive the gears to operate the hoist drum, which is located right here. The crowd engine is mounted directly ahead of the hoist drum on the back of the boom. 
If you look on the right side of the shovel boom, you can see another operator station, complete with a seat and control. This would be the location of the crane man, as he was called, and his job was to ride the side of the shovel boom and work the hand lever, which would open and close the dipper. And as you can see, the company who owned this Class 80 installed a metal shield over the operating station to protect him from the elements. And from right here you can get a crystal clear view, along with a cool early 1900s feel of what the operator would see if he were running a Class 80. According to this machine's serial number, this Class 80, Unit 47340, was featured in the 1912 edition of Excavating Contractor in an article talking about the shovel setting a production record by loading 180 rail cars from a 12-foot bank in 10 hours. And the picture that you are looking at right now is of the same Class 80 when she was still in operation over 100 years ago, which is pretty awesome. And to help give you an idea of the size of a Class 80, the car body on this machine measures 42 feet in length and 10 feet wide. The overall height of this machine, from the ground to the top of the A-frame, is 21 feet 6 inches. And the overall operating weight of the Class 80 is 102 tons. In 1911, just one year after purchasing Vulcan Steam Shovel Company, Bucyrus purchased Atlantic Equipment Company, forming the new firm Bucyrus Company. All Atlantic Railroad shovel models were discontinued in 1911. However, due to the large overstock of the Atlantic Railroad shovels, these machines continued to be offered by Bucyrus even after the takeover. The last Atlantic Railroad shovel, a Class 80, was shipped in 1918. But there she is. The flagship shovel of Atlantic Equipment Company, a 1910 Class 80, 18, 4 and a half.